Using the term colour blindness is actually pretty misleading. Only a tiny percentage of sufferers see without colour, with the world appearing in black and white like you might imagine. So technically, we should be using colour vision deficiency, but that's a mouthful, so I'm gonna stick with colour blindness, all right? Yeah? Good. The analogy between your eyes and a camera chip works pretty well, so let's run with that. Instead of a camera chip full of sensors that pick up blue, green and red light, you detect light with blue, green and red sensing cone receptor cells in the retina at the back of your eyes. Now, those three types of cones have different photopigments that absorb different parts of the spectrum. Although, to be honest, a red cone doesn't actually just detect red, which is helpful. To be more precise, it does detect red the most, but also the colours either side of that on the light spectrum too. So it's actually best to label the three types of cones as detecting short wavelengths, medium wavelengths and long wavelengths. Now, rather than being blind to colour, it's usually more to do with misperceiving shades and colours thanks to malfunctions with those cones. And as with all the best cones, there are plenty of flavours to choose from. You can have anomalous trichromacy, where one of the three cones is defective, dichromacy, where a cone is fully missing, or monochromacy, where only one cone is left and a person can't discern between colours really at all. Now, hands up if you've been to the opticians and had to spot the number sneakily camouflaged in a bigger circle of coloured dots. This is called the Ishihara test, and it's testing for those colour vision deficiencies. If you can't see a number in those pictures, you may have some form of colour blindness. If you can see the numbers okay, but want to see what it's like to be colour blind, try taking a look at the Chromatic Vision Simulator app. It takes your photos and then alters the colour to represent how someone with missing or damaged cones might see the image. Now, if we want to know if we can cure colour blindness, we've first got to discover what causes it. What causes you to have a defective or a missing cone? Well, you don't lose cones by accident, although you can damage them. Your existing cones come down to your genetic makeup, so blame your parents for the DNA that they dealt you. Also, the incidence of colour blindness shows that your odds of suffering from it depends on your sex. Take red-green colour blindness, for example, which, for the medical name collectors out there, and I know there are a few of you, is either protonomaly, linked to the M cones, the medium wavelengths, or deuteronomaly, linked to the L cones. Red-green colour blindness is sex-linked because the genes that tell the cells to produce photopigments are carried on the X chromosome. If you're female and you've got a defective instruction on one of your X chromosomes, then you're likely to have got a spare set of correct instructions on your other X chromosome, and in which case, you'll be unaffected. For gentlemen, though, you only have one X chromosome, so if you've got the scupper gene on that, you'll likely suffer from red-green colour blindness. That's why it affects 1 in 12 men, but only 1 in 200 women. OK, so if colour blindness is a genetic condition, can we turn to science to solve it? You betcha. In 2009, there was success in curing colour blindness in male squirrel monkeys. Using gene therapy delivered via a specially created virus, scientists at the University of Washington managed to get the male monkeys to produce the photopigment they were missing. Now, the good news is that a technique has been discovered to make this work in humans, thanks to the good people at the University of California in Berkeley. The bad news is that it involves injections directly into your eyeballs. While you're waiting for a less terrifying method to be invented though, there's plenty of assistive tech that can help. Tinted contact lenses can make your roses redder and your skies bluer, although they do slightly scupper your ability to detect distance or, or depth. There's something else promising too, and it was discovered by sheer accident. Dr. Don McPherson invented some natty protective glasses to be used by doctors performing laser surgery. The lens contains a rare earth iron that absorbs a lot of the dangerous light from the laser, while still allowing the surgeons to be able to differentiate between blood and tissues inside their patients, which is kind of useful. McPherson happened to be wearing a pair while playing frisbee because material scientists do nerdy things like that, right? And then he happened to lend them to his colourblind frisbee partner, who could suddenly see in full colour. 
What a story! Working with mathematicians and doctors, McPherson and his unnamed mate, not fair, rustled up some new glasses which essentially absorb certain wavelengths of light in order to redistribute the light that reaches the defective cones of the wearer. These specs are now known as the Sci-Fi-tastic N-Chroma CX lenses. But before you shell out on them though, be warned, they don't work for everyone. A bonus fact before I go, Facebook's iconic blue colour was chosen because Mark Zuckerberg is colour blind and it was the easiest colour for him to see. Are there any other optical illusions that you guys know of that you want explaining? If so, pop them in the comments below and we might give it a go. Lasers. They make everything better, right? From Bond films to nightclubs to your actual eyes. But wait, how does that laser eye surgery actually work? Aren't we told we're supposed to avoid looking directly at bright lights? 